Hello and welcome to Chandler Science, AP Physics 1, Dynamics, Tension. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about tension. Um, we've already covered all the basics about Newton's laws and the concepts, and all that's left to do now is practice, practice, practice different types of problems. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at two uh, different, uh, very common tension problems, and we'll solve them together. And then I'll give you a bonus problem at the end to see if you can figure that one out for extra credits. And don't forget, if you're one of my students in class, you're taking your notes, you're following along, and you're also going to post one question on the discussion forums, and you are going to answer or reply to someone else's question on the discussion forums as well, at least once. If you're from somewhere else on the internet, welcome and hope you enjoy. Uh, let's go and get started with tension. All right, guys, so here's a very common problem we'll see um, in class or on tests on the AP exam. You'll have an object that's held up by two ropes or two cables. And don't forget, that's, of course, what tension is. Tension is the force in a rope or a cable or a string. And so in this problem, we have a horizontal uh, rope uh, with a tension force T1. And then we have a one of the angle, a 25 degree angle uh, rope tension and tension 2. And we want to know, uh, most problems will ask, well, it, usually the object will be at rest, right? It's like a sign. Imagine like a sign at a on a building that's held up by a rope or string or something like that. And the object will be at rest, and we want to know what's the tension in the ropes. All right, so um, if the object is at rest, then we know that the net forces in every direction are zero, right? And that is a big, a big help to us, because we know then that the net forces in the y direction are zero, and we know the net forces in the x direction are zero. Now we're going to draw a free body diagram for our object, so let's make a little dot for the box. And we're going to say, all right, we have a tension force T2 going this way. We got a tension force T1 going this way. Pulling the box to the left. And then we have the object's weight mg down, right? And that's it. And now we know that if it's at rest, every everything needs to cancel out, right? Everything needs to balance out. So let's go ahead and draw our components, right? Remember that um, if we are have an object like this, then we need to have components for any for any uh, vector that is not either horizontal or vertical. And of course, the tension in T2 is neither horizontal nor vertical, so we need to make horizontal and vertical components for it. So let's draw this guy here, the horizontal component, and let's make a vertical component, and I'll use my different colors just so to be very clear. Ah. All right, and we have a vertical component here. And of course, that angle there is 25 degrees. So I'll go ahead and label that as well. OK, there we go. Now, again, remember, guys, we said before that the whole point of uh, this vector component here, right, the one that's still in black at an angle, is to help us find the red and blue components. Right. That's the only reason why we have that, that guy. Um, so this, in this case, actually, what we're going to do is the uh, kind of a, the opposite that we're, we're going to work backwards we're actually going to use the components the blue and the red components to help us find t2 right so it's kind of the opposite this time right every now and then you know you got to adapt to the problem all right well we know mg uh, the mass of the kil box is 10 kilograms and so mg is 100 newtons so here's the trick to this kind of problem guys what's the only other vector com vector or component that is also pointing up and that's the blue component, right? So that means we know this is the only with the objects at rest, right? The net forces in the y direction are zero. That means that that blue component, guess how much, uh, how many newtons the force is? It also has to be 100 newtons, right? It has to be. We have the weight pulling it down. Well, we know that the objects at rest, so the net force is zero, which means the upward forces must also be zero, right? So our net force equation for in the y direction, uh, the net forces in y will be uh, T2, T2 uh, sine 25 uh, minus 100 has to equal 0, which means that that component there must be, if we add 100 over to T2 sine 25 must equal 100. All right, so what we can do here is go ahead and solve for T2, actually. We can go ahead and divide by the sine of 25 both sides. And if we put, you know, it's a, kind of the nice thing. Of, if, you, if we put um, all of our forces in terms of T2, we can do this. The sine of 25 is cancel this side. 
So uh, T2, 100 divided by the sine of 25 is, I'm getting 236.6, seems reasonable, 236.6 Newton. So that's, that's what T2 is. What about T1? Well, again, go back to our free body diagram. Uh, the red component to the right must equal T1, right? Remember, we're at rest. The net forces in the x direction are equal to zero, which means that every vector to the right must have the same magnitude as the vector to the left. So there's only two vectors horizontally, one to the right and one to the left. They got to equal each other, right? So that means that uh, T1 must equal T2 cosine of 25. Now, um, we already found what T2 was. Even if we hadn't, there are other, you know, it's all different ways to actually do this problem, different trigonometry tricks you can do. The one I did is perfectly, you know, acceptable. Um, you could have also used like uh, cosine of the, you could have used um, cosine, no, you could have used tangent. Yeah, you could use tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. To help you solve for the that red component, right? Because the red component is the adjacent component. So now you know what op the opposite component is, the hundred. You know the angle is twenty-five. You could you could um, solve for the the side there. You know again, there's lots of different ways to do this. I'll walk you through each one here real quick. Let's go ahead and do it the way that I've already set up. Um, we know what T two is, so T one must equal T two cosine twenty-five. Well, we know T two is two thirty-six point six. So we're going to take that, we're going to take that times the sine, uh, or sorry, cosine of 25, and we get 214.5, 214.5 Newton. So there we go, there's our T1, and there's our T2. And just to show you what I meant before, um, we know Sokotoa, right? So that means a tangent of an angle, theta, equal to opposite over adjacent. Well, the opposite side of this triangle is the blue arrow, right? That's 100 over adjacent. Let's call that, let's just call that um, T1x, since that's, or sorry, T2x, excuse me. Um, and that's got to equal the tangent of the angle, which is 25 degrees. So I'm going to multiply it by T2x both sides to get it out of the denominator, right? So I'm going to get 100 equals tangent of 25 times T2x. Then I'm going to divide by the tangent of 25 both sides. So I'll get T2x equals 100 over the tangent of 25, uh, 25 degrees. And that's going to give me, well, you should already know, right? Should be 214.5. Let's check 100 divided by the tangent of 25. Holy cow, what do you know, 214.5 Newton. So lots of different ways to solve these stuff, right guys? The different, you know, trig uh, functions and stuff, but um, there's a few ways to do it. So it's pretty it's pretty actually simple. Uh, students always see problems like this and they get a little, um, you know, befuddled because they're like, oh my gosh, there's like this angle and that one's flat. What do I do? Remember guys, if we're at rest, net force is zero in every direction. That means you, if you know the components to the right, they must equal everything that goes to the left and everything down must equal what goes up. So it's not too bad. All right, let's try one more on the next slide. All right, so the next problem that we see very often is problems like this, where this time, instead of there being a horizontal um, cable or, or string or whatever, there'll be there'll be both of them at an angle, okay? And so this one, again, students often get a little, you know, downtrodden when they see problems like this, but it's really not that bad, right? Let's draw a free body diagram. And of course, again, the, the, the question will be, this is it's called as T1, and it's called as T2, so the tension and in that cable and tension in this cable. Uh, let's draw a body diagram for the object here. Uh, we have the weight going down, m, uh, mg. We have tension 2 going that way, and the tension 1 going that way. The angle is the same for both, right? Both 30 degree angles. So that's kind of nice. That means we know that, uh, like I said in the last problem, right? If, if all the doubt, again, the object will be at rest, right? You, I've, never, I've never seen a problem where you have an object that's hanging by rope strings that's not at rest, it's always at rest. So that means that the net forces are zero. So we're gonna have our horizontal components. Let's go, we'll go blue horizontal this time, All right? One for T1, one for T2. And then we'll have our vertical components. 
going up here and up there, right? Just like that. And let's go make the, the downward uh, weight force red also since it's vertical technically. And make the MG red also, why not? Okay. Now, we're looking for the tension here. Now, if, that, if the angle is the same for both, that means that the tension is the same for both, right? They're both going to be holding up the same amount of weight. So here's the trick, guys. The trick is if you have two cables that are both holding up an object and the angle is the same for both, in this case, 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here, okay? That means that each one of their vertical components, this guy and this guy, are both supporting half the weight. There's two cables, right? T1 has half the weight, T2 supports the other half the weight. The vertical components, right? Not the horizontal part, but the vertical components. They're both supporting half the weight. They have to, because how else would it work? Otherwise, they're going to be tilted or something like that. It wouldn't be this, the right angle. So, if the, again, I'll reiterate, if the angle is the same, in this case, both 30 degrees, then both of the vertical components of these cables will be the same. Half the weight. Has to be half the weight, right? Well, what's the weight? The weight force is, see, the M, M is 20, G is 10, so 200 newtons. So that means that the or the vertical component I mean for T1 and T2 is both 100, right? 100 newtons right there, the vertical component. And this one's also 100 newtons. And once you realize that, you're set, right? There's really nothing else, much, much else to do. Um, again, there's several ways that we could solve for this um, horizontal component. Now that we know the vertical component and we know the angle, we could um, solve for that horizontal component and then we could use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. Or if we want to be clever and maybe save ourselves a step, we can do use Sokotoa. So yes, so ka toa. And see if we know the opposite side of the triangle and we're looking for the hypotenuse, we know opposite looking for hypotenuse. What if we use sine, right? So sine of the angle, theta equals the opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, and it doesn't matter, since again, both cables are in the same direction, it doesn't matter which direction, um, uh, sorry, it doesn't matter which cable we find for, they're identical, right? So once we find T1, we found T2 automatically because their angles are the same. Again, if their angles were not the same, then you gotta do more work. In fact, that's gonna be, the, that, we'll find out in a second about that. Um, okay, so, uh, right, so we're looking for the hypotenuse, right? That's T1, that's what place hypotenuse with T1, since that makes more sense. And then we'll sort of place opposite with 100, because that's what it is, right? The opposite side of the triangle from the angle there is 100. And then theta is 30 degrees. Sine of 30 is a half, so I'm going to multiply by T1 both sides to get the T1 out of the denominator. So these T1s cancel. Um, get, uh, again, sine of 30 is a half, so I get a half times T1 equals 100. Divide by a half both sides. And T1 is going to be 200, right? 100 divided by half. All right, so there we go. That means T1 is 100, and of course T2 is also 200 newtons. Both going to be the same. If there was a problem that one of those is fine, let's go ahead and find the horizontal component. Just maybe you know we want to see how that how that works too. One, uh, let's say we didn't know what the, the hypotenuses were yet. Again, we can use trigonometry. Let's use tangent. It's good. It's good. Just trigonometry practice. Tangent of our angle equal to opposite of the, of the triangle, which is which is 100, right? Over the blue components, let's call that T1x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by T1x, and then divide by tangent. So I get T1x times tangent theta equals 100. Now I'll divide by tangent of theta, so T1x equals 100 over the tangent of my angle, which is 30 degrees. So T1x is 100. Hundred divided by tangent of thirty, get one hundred seventy-three point two newtons. And there we go. Right now we have both the triangles. And you, if you really wanted to to see that the hypotenuse T one uh, squared equals the Pythagorean theorem, right? T one squared equals the each component squared, so one hundred squared plus one seventy-three point two squared. That means that 
100 squared is uh, a 10, or yeah, 10,000. I count my zeros. One, two, three, four. Plus 173.2 squared. So it's almost 30,000. 29,998. Well, 29,998. We add that up. And then we're going to screw it, right? Square root to get rid of the squares on here, so square root of that. Square root of that sum is, look at that, 200. What do you know? So lots of different ways to do these problems. That's why I like them, because there's so many different paths to victory, you know? Um, so don't get confused or or down, you know, uh, upset or, you know, depressed when you see these tension problems are really quite easy because they're always at rest. And anytime we have an object that's at rest, the net force is zero and it makes our lives easier, right? Because we know everything's got to balance in every direction. Okay, um, I want to say a few of the things about tension and that's going to be that um, I want you to, to recognize that uh, the, the greater the angle between the horizontal and uh, and the tension force, right? So in other words, like this angle here was 30 in our problem. If you look at the, what I just drew up here at the top of the screen, this angle here would probably be almost, almost 90, maybe like 85 degrees, right? The larger that angle, the, the smaller the horizontal component of the triangle is, right? So I want you to think about that as kind of a way to kind of ask yourself, does my answer make sense, right? This angle was 30 degrees, so it's fairly flat, which is why my x component was larger than my than my um, than my vertical component, which was 100, right? Uh, any if the angle is less than 45, right, and you're supporting weight like that, again, it only works. It's only is really accurate if, if both um, angles are the same. Although I guess it still applies. But if the angle is less than 45, then the horizontal component is going to be very large, much larger than the ver vertical component, right? Because of the because of the fact that it's it's the the rope is 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 flat, and so if you think about it, it just it's 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 longer this way, which means the horizontal components must be longer, right? Like physically longer, so more tension in those ropes. But if the rope if the angle is greater than 45, like the one I drew up here, right? Then that vert that horizontal component here. Will be quite short, which means the tension, the horizontal component of the tension will also be quite short. All right, so it's kind of a way to check your work. Did you ever get a problem where, like, let's say that we solved this, we messed up somewhere, and we got the vertical component to be like, you know, 180 or something like that, and then we got the horizontal component to be like 120? We could ask ourselves, wait a minute, does it make sense that the vertical component is greater than the horizontal component in this case when the angle is, is, is so short? You know, so what is it? Acute, less than 45, right? So acute, or is that, I forget my geometry terms. Less than 45, though. Um, so it's just got a way to check your work, I guess. All right, so those are two um, pretty straightforward tension problems. Let's do one more. We're actually, I'm not going to do it. It's going to be a bonus problem. It's extra credit. Uh, I have a ceiling. Wow, I'm trying to draw. Struggle continues. Straight line. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, we have an, a ceiling, and we got a, a sign. Let's say a sign here. For Chandler's classroom, Chandler's room. I got a sign. I decided to hang the sign all funky, like this. Horizontal. Now this this let's call this T1. Let's call this T T2. So tension and the rope over here is T1, and the tension in this rope is T2. The angle between the horizontal and here is let's say it's I don't know how about 30, 30 degrees. The angle here for T2, let's say it's uh, 70 degrees. That the mass of the sign I'm hanging is, I don't know, how about 15 kilograms. Pretty heavy, nice heavy duty sign for my room. I want to know the tension in T1, and I want to know the tension in T2. Now, this is a pretty challenging problem. At, it seems like it is at first. If you figure it out, it's actually not too bad. I'll give you a hint. Substitution, that's going to be your hint. Remember, it, it, the sign is at rest. That means the net force in the x direction is zero, and the net force in the y direction is zero. Okay, so that's, that's your hint. Substitution and the net forces are zero in every direction. That means everything's got to cancel out. All right, so give that a shot. Um, if you can, uh, my students show me the solution in class. You know, by, let's say by Wednesday of this coming week of the year I'm making this video. Um, 
if this is if this is not 2019 then you know different day anyway um all right guys hope you, that cleared up some of the con concerns you had with tension there'll be one more video for for forces coming out soon it'll be about springs so hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned a little bit about tension and you saw how really i think you'll agree that these problems really aren't too bad well this one's pretty this one might be kind of bad but the other two weren't too bad all right guys have a great evening or day or morning or whatever it is you're watching this video if you have any questions, don't forget to send me a message on Remind or email me anytime, day or night. I have no life. You are my life. Have a great night. Bye-bye.